music is back. <laughs> and it's great to be here in the heart of the music, in the heart of Crimes, in the heart of Leitrim, and this is the first of four nights in the Bonded by the Music, the Leitrim Family Series, and the concept is uh, families of musicians in Leitrim coming together on these four Wednesdays, uh, starting this evening with the McGoverns, then the Mulligans, uh, the Morrows, and the Ward Sisters. So four wonderful nights of music here at uh, Cryan's Chalkyol, and the first night of live music here in well over a year. Uh, so that is really something to, to celebrate. And uh, a special word of thanks to uh, the funders of these four sessions, Leitrim, County Council and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaelic, Sport and Media. Uh, and uh, to the great team of people here uh, at Crimes and to, uh, to Keith Unsound and uh, Johnny Gogan uh, filming. Um, I'm just going to read a few bits mostly linked to music uh, before the wonderful McGovern family take us away on a belt of music. Um, and the first piece, I suppose, comes out again of the heart of, of music here in the county. About, I think, seven years ago, I was asked to write something for the launch of the first Leitrim Equation CD. And I began to write this piece, which has become a musical equation, and I've added to it over the years as the music has changed, as more people have come into the music, uh, as shifts occur, as they do. Uh, so a musical equation, uh, for all who made and make music in and of Leitrim. Trying to make music, you drum a litany, years light, faces out of darkness, notes adrift, laughter, smoke, whiskey blazing, you name names to name memory. The unnamed, unremembered, snow-graved pipers, fiddlers, flute players, women, men, dancers under moon, American wake lament on gravestone, rousing life again, again, never. John McKenna, all the Lennons, the McGoverns, Morrows, Wards, Tom Mulligan and the clan, Maureen Dorn, Seamus Horn, Joe Lackey Gallagher, Brian Rooney, Mary McPartland, the McNamaras, Sheena, Michael O'Brien, Fiona and Damien, Eleanor Shanley, Thomas Morn, Mick and Shane Woods, Charlie McGettigan, Eamon Daly and Orla, Oliver Lachlan, Dave Sheridan, Louise Devitt, L Liam Kelly, Sean Gilrain, Mick Mulvey, Lorraine Sweeney, John McCartan, Fanula Maxwell, Liam Prine, Shane Meehan, John Tooley. So many more, too many to name, music spilling out on the streets of Drumkirn, Drumshambo, Carrick, in the houses of Tarman, Sunday morning pubs warm with fiddle music and flute, the turns of tunes through gaps and time, music out of lake and river and the shape of bushes swing and rush and the darkness down. Oh, and the light of spring brightening into summer, hay dust and bog, fire flickering never out, the feet light and sure on flag floors in Ahamore, Camoth, in Leeds, London. May Hennigan bringing the 78s back from New York, sound gone and carried home, sweet as spring water, rich as good buttermilk, the gramophone needle turning slow and strong, and because borders blur and merge, Packy Degnan sits again in Paddy Max, the jaunty angle of his head, the bright eyes, Tommy Gwynn plays a slow air for the dead, Neil Monaghan in Estonia straps on the pipes for the Leitrim thrush, and the wings of my soul. Rosie Stewart sings the notes of pain and laughter. Edwina Gucking steps into a circle of cold light. Muhammad al Husseini sings Queen and Adri Wirra in scary rings. Peter Flanagan in Ballymanone sings Band Amore for Henry Glassy. And Morris Lennon in Chicago plays the spirit of the music. Back in the county, Seamus Ennis sits in a kitchen outside Mohol, recording the ballad of Lord Leitrim. Tom Munley drives a bullock to the fair in exchange for song and dance. Wooden clogs echo from the sessions across the fields in Derndangan when my father was a boy. And in the old 
abandoned mine shafts of Arigna, the collier's reel is there in the drip of coal black water. Um, and just looking around, um, I figure that people like um, Patsy Hanley, John Carty, and Aidan Shannon, and I'm few, sure a few others, uh, might be added to that uh, honorary list of uh, almost Leitrimites. Uh, all, <laughs> uh, again, always, always here for the music and all deeply appreciated. Um, there's a wonderful new album out, just out. Um, make sure you get it. Um, another album of the music of John McKenna. Um, Liam Kelly with uh, Kevin Branny. Uh, Liam playing a flute that belonged to McKenna and which he used in recordings in New York. Um, brought out by the wonderful John McKenna Society in Drumkeeran at home uh, with McKenna. Uh, and um, really, really wonderful recording. Um, but it reminds me that, um, you know, I grew up very close to McKenna's home place in Tarman, and um, this poem I wrote after talking to an old neighbour, uh, Tommy Gralton, who worked in the, in the same coal mines that I mentioned there in Arigna. And um, Tommy told me about a story, he reminded me of a story I'd heard before, about one time... Uh, McKenna came to play at a sports day in Tarman, uh, and he was expecting to be asked to play music. So he had brought his instrument, he had his concert flute with him, and he wasn't asked to play. And he was gravely insulted. So he, was, he left in disgust, was heading back up the mountain for home, and he met Tommy Granton on the way, who happened to ask him to play a tune. And they sat at the side of the road and he played a tune. And in a sense, that saved the day. Uh, so this poem is called McKenna's Tunes. The pitman in the mist, a trip to Cove, the sanctuary reel, the long island set, and carry the, the buttermilk home. The tunes we'd make if only we had the ear that turned the heart, the road for home. Disconsolate of a sports day, no one asks you to play, and heading away up the mountain, you meet one man who stops you, saves the hour, asks for a tune, what to play. The colliers reel, what better in this place where years and wheels of time on again. The man as small as he once was big, strong, frail now, rock dust on the lung, remembers meeting McKenna on the road and asks him to play. And oh, the glory of it. The birds alight in the bushes singing to match the man. And music catches time, holds it frail as moth or gable bat, flings it back to life, tosses it up and away, and when the shadows gather in the half-set ruins, flit it under oak and lintel, fiddle, flute and dancing feet shout down the echoed moon, and new rose tune bursts into scent. Owl as white as pit is black, and coal flies softly. All is one, all is tune, all is silence, all is nettle, all is fossil stone. Um, the landscape around here continually inspires pieces for me. And back in April, May, I was working with Edwina Guckin making a film around Strokestown and Boyle. And one rather sleety, snowy evening, uh, we were driving back in um, and uh, near Woodbrook um, and uh, I was trying to write a poem for the great Michal O'Sullivan who had died a year before for a book that's coming out on Michal and somehow the, the evening brought the poem and um, this is Across the Plains of Boyle in memoriam Michal O'Sullivan. Woodbrook is dark, the gate to the driveway padlocked and rolled to the touch. The singer who lives here now is wintering out. We drive away, sleet blowing heavy across the plains of Boyle. A breath away is Alderford and Kilronan, the separation of body and soul. And Losser, the flaming saint who lit many a good fight. Not to mention the bare head of Ben Bulban and the bones that lie beneath. Your music swoops to mind, catches the white rhythm of the windscreen wipers. So car and evening and blurring world become one with Easter snow. 
The junior playing moves quick as a magpie, lingers on a grace note and away. Deep in all the locks nearby, eels are turning, elver light invisible between worlds. I stop near the Shannon and listen to the river flow, piano and water. Like Oriada, you made things happen, west to east, the greatest music. Um, just going to do two more pieces. Um, total change of tone and everything else. Um, as I'm sure all of you know, Liam Crine is um, one of the great people in this town. Um, and uh, I've had marvellous nights here in Crine's. And um, Liam is also a great raconteur and storyteller. And uh, one night he had me uh, in fits of, of laughter with stories. And one of them went in very deep. And I couldn't resist kind of taking it and turning it into a piece, um, which is really Liam's. Uh, but it's um, it's dedicated to him, and it's um, I call it Beckett on a boring, um, bit of yarn really. Um, two men going home this night. One points to the sky. The sun, he says. The moon, says the other. No, the sun. The moon. The sun. The moon. I'm telling you, it's the sun. It's the moon. The effing sun. No, the effing moon. Moon, sun, sun, moon. And they lay into each other and tumble into the ditch, fighting and flailing. And they hear a sound. Bicycle coming along in the semi-darkness. The man stops and looks into the ditch at them. They look up and they pounce and pull him in and they point up. Sun or moon? And it's more like a threat than a question. He thinks for a minute. Then he says, Oh, James, lads, I wouldn't know. Sure, I'm not from around here. Be <laughs> 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 private. And uh, going to finish with this, uh, which in a sense is kind of almost similar territory in terms of uh, local, um, yeah, wit and diplomat and everything else. Um, with a little twist to it. Um, lunar landing. You all think, the barman said, you all think that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. Well, you're wrong, because he wasn't. You see, Francie McPadden was going home this night and a good 14 or 15 pints in his belly. There was a full moon, it was July, and there's a hoor of a bend in the road out there by the cross. Francie took it in top, and it seems he was blinded by the moonlight and the old Cortina went splash into the lake, right into the moon in the water. So you could say Francie landed well ahead of Armstrong, <laughs> only he didn't come back. Um, the mind lifted. It's lovely to see everybody and thanks for coming out. Um, I suppose the McGovern family is now a family of families. Uh, so we're going to start off with the Edwards family. This is obviously Maggie um, McGovern, Edwards, and uh, two twin boys here. This is their first time playing to, in, through a microphone. So we're going to play a couple of horn pipes and a couple of reels for you.
thanks very much. Uh, I'm not sure the name of the first one in the rustiness showing. Uh, this last one I think is called My Former Wife. And uh, going to move into a set of reels. Start with the Piper's Despair. Nothing to do with the former wife. <laughs> and the uh, second reel actually is one that I see John Carthy here tonight. This is one that we associate with John playing. I think John composed it. I think I saw it on the Tea Time Treats at some stage. Bring the treats with you, John. <laughs> You're waiting down for this. Uh, and the last one is a tune of Dwyer's Root. all week <laughs> to be continued okay would you like to hear Andy and Maggie start off this one because they won't do it for me <laughs> mm. 
These are two flings, um, flingy, horn piping thing, type of thingies, I suppose, uh, that we learned from Declan Folan um, on an album. Many years ago, we used to be travelling around in the, in the car with our good dad, Seamus, here. And uh, there'd be loads of tapes, but Declan Folan was a particularly likeable one, I think, at the time. And these are two tunes we learned from it.
Uh, thanks a million. That's a set of reels that we would have probably learned, as I say, Dad took us and Mam took us many places in the car and uh, one of the places we used to go to was Muncher Connacht and they up to a, a great man there, Vincent Tai, who sort of as, as young kids took us under his wing a little bit and just taught us a lot of tunes and I suppose taught us a lot of manners as well. He was a good man for that too. So he was, but uh, he was, he was I, I suppose we, we had great long trips in the car and uh, it was mum and dad that, that did all that and we're very appreciative of it. Um, another place we went to was Kilty Clatter, so uh, we should acknowledge that and there's a couple of Kilty Clatter folk here um, in the house tonight. I don't think I need to even mention names. Um, it was great, great to see them. Uh, so we're going to play a couple of Charlie Lennon tunes. Uh, the first one's called The Leitrim Lilter and the second one is called Kilty Town. Our mum was particularly proud I suppose, when we played that tune and uh, she, she always requested that on a few hornpipes so we're going to play a few hornpipes for you later on hopefully. Um, I'm going to introduce a young man here who's given me a good run for me money at the minute. <laughs> this is Owen McGovern, this is uh, one of James's kids here and uh, he's 10 and he's a rugby player <laughs> and he's bursting lads left, right and centre. And he's, Bursting bags and bellows and things like that as well. A real star. He's going to play a couple of tunes. What are we going to play?
Make a Russell's rail and roll on the right grass. Two more of my gang going to join us now, Avian and Leisha and Fiddle and Accordion. If we can find them. <laughs> I suppose just to say, we were on our way over here today, and even during the week, we were talking about Cryons, and I couldn't believe it that the kids kept asking about Liam Cryon and where was Cryons and all that. and. I suppose in normal times we'd, we'd all been in crying several times in the last you know year and a half and uh, I suppose now that they've found the way it's the first time to play in crying so hopefully we'll be back lots of times. <laughs> We're going to start off with Inishio. Thank you. 
Right, we're going to continue with a couple of jigs. Um, the first one's called The Rolling Wave and the second one's called Sean Wee. We'll leave it at that then for you.
Thanks very much. That's a first tune. There was a tune called the Bell Table Waltz. Um, I think we learned it from Stockton's Wing um, album many years ago. Again, travelling around in the car. Uh, of course, I suppose the connection there was Morris Lennon and Mam and Kilty Clower always promoting all good things Kilty Clower. And uh, the second reel I think was a reel that came back from the Joe Mooney Summer School, and I think it was Rachel that learned it on the accordion um, from Anne Conroy Burke many years ago and I think we all sort of took to the tune straight away and we played it a couple bit. Rachel's sorry that she can't be here tonight. Um she was away on the on the holidays. Um she's delighted about her niece who won gold at the FLA last week, Emily King. Thank you bow. And her husband Val of course told us that oh Roscommon are gonna win everything this year. <laughs> I think he was referring to the other 20s. <laughs> we continue with a couple of jigs. Oh, sorry, jigs. Is it? No? <laughs> Oops. Jigs. Uh, I think it's the Maid in the Green, a slip jig then called Canavan Bon. No. Canavan Bon and Whelan's Old South. point of thanking Keith now because I always forget to thank Keith. This is the man who makes everything sound okay. <laughs> Thanks Keith. I always forget to do And I should say he has the potential to make us sound absolutely awful. That's right. We all stay on the right side of Keith.
uh, we're going to play a couple of tunes. Um, more road trips, I suppose. We, we used to go to um, Father Quinn and the parochial house in Gartletra. And uh, Father Quinn, of course, for anybody that knows him, um, great researcher and uh, musician himself. And I suppose he's done a hell of a lot of work to revive a lot of old Leitrim tunes and stuff. So we're going to play a couple of reels from that. We, we were playing these in the house. We were actually we just happened to start playing these in the house. And they were saying, yeah, maybe we should play them. And uh, of course, Seamus was telling us to slow down. We weren't too fast. So if we go too fast, I apologise. <laughs>
Thanks a million. Um, again, the last tune there, I think, was one that we learned from Father John Quinn. Um, and I suppose we're going to finish up now. We're going to let, let you have your rest of your night in peace. Uh, we're going to play a couple of tunes. Uh, I think it's Josie McDermott's their trip to Birmingham first. Uh, I'm out of a name for a second one. There's the rustiness again. Uh, the third one is, what's the second one? Captain, Captain Kelly's. Very good. James isn't as rusty as the rest of us. Third, third one then, James. The Abbey Ring. The Abbey. That's the fourth one. <laughs> There's a third in there somewhere too. So uh, if you, you'll get these on YouTube somewhere anyway. See, <laughs> if you really want the names of them. Um, I suppose I'd like to thank Liam um, for organising this. It's wonderful to be back playing a few tunes together. <laughs> People like Liam and his team that have gone that extra mile to make, make it happen. So uh, we've got thank, thanks to Liam and thanks to Legion Arts and thanks to Vincent, Keith, uh, and thanks to you all for coming out, most, most importantly. Yeah. We'll finish up with, with a selection of reels. Thanks again.
it's lovely to see, uh, I suppose we've been coming here, James is the first one to come here, and it's probably one of his first pints was in here, that's <laughs> why <laughs> so it was, and uh, I think it was with John Daly, John called and picked us up one night and he, he, he rang Liam, it was, it was novelty at the time, I remember having a car phone and John Daly had a car phone, we thought it was the coolest thing ever, he rang Liam to say he was taking a couple of young buckos over. And uh, we had a great night. I think Oliver and Damien were there that night, and Michael probably as well. And uh, we've been coming a long time since, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful place. I want to finish up with two reels, uh, two of the John McKenna reels. You'll know, you'll know the names of them. <laughs> 